Hi there, good morning. Uh, welcome to this Rock Solid video. My name's John um, and uh, I, I'm just going to introduce this video that we're about to watch. We are at the moment in the middle of a series, a teaching series called Distinct and we're looking at the book of James and we're trying to see how uh, the words that James has written in the Bible can help us understand our faith our Christian faith as distinct. And uh, this morning we've got Tim come in, he's going to do a video uh, for us looking at the theme of godly wisdom. Godly wisdom. So why don't we uh, see what Tim has to say on godly wisdom. Hi, welcome to this week's Rock Solid video. It's great to have you with us. Now we're in the middle of a series called Distinct, looking at the book of James in the Bible and what it means to live distinctive, different lives because of Jesus. And today we're talking about what it means to be wise and exploring the difference between being clever and wise. So here's a question for you right at the beginning. Who is the cleverest person that you know. I wonder if you've ever heard of Harry Houdini. He's often referred to as the greatest magician of all time, referred to as the genius of escape. He did amazing feats of magic, but do you know how he died? He told a group of students that he could withstand any punch to his stomach. And so one of the students did, and the damage that was caused inside him led to his death. So you could say he was a genius, but not exactly very wise. And you could say that might have been very clever, but not wise. When I was growing up, there was a film called The Nutty Professor, all about like a super intelligent, really clever professor who had zero common sense. Intelligent, but not wise. Now we don't talk very much about wisdom, but we do talk about people making wise choices. Some people talk about a wise old man or they're wise beyond their years. So here's a question for you. Is there a difference between being clever and being wise? And if so, what would you say that difference is? <laughs> Now here's the truth, not everyone can be clever, but everyone can be wise. And it's wisdom that's actually far more important than being clever. In today's bit of the Bible, it talks about being wise and what that looks like. So let's read it together. Are there those among you who are truly wise and understanding? Then they should show it by living right and doing good things with a gentleness that comes from wisdom. But if you're selfish and have got bitter jealousy in your hearts, do not brag. Your bragging's a lie that hides the truth. That kind of wisdom does not come from God, but from the world. It's not spiritual, it's from the devil. Where jealousy and selfishness are, there will be confusion and every kind of evil. But the wisdom that comes from God is first of all pure, then peaceful, gentle, and easy to please. This wisdom's always ready to help those who are troubled and to do good for others. It's always fair and honest. People who work for peace in a peaceful way plant a good crop of right living. Now in verse 13, James asks a question. Who is wise among you? Are any of you wise or sensible? That's a strange question. But it's probably because some might have thought that they were wise. Maybe they were given the impression that because they were a Christian, they followed Jesus, they were somehow better than other people or wiser. And look how James answers it. He says, then show it by living right and by being humble and wise in everything you do. True wisdom comes not uh, from thinking you're not wise, by being humble and then by trying to live in right ways. So here's a question for you. What do you think it means to be humble? So 
let's play a game. We'll call this game Humble Pie. So I'm going to name some people. And who of these people do you think is more humble? So Donald Trump, Kim Kardashian, Cristiano Ronaldo and Liz Truss. Who's more humble and why? Why don't you have a chat? Well, here in the Bible, James, who's the brother of Jesus, spells out what wisdom is. It's living humbly. Listen to what he says in verse 14 to 16. But if your heart is full of bitter jealousy and selfishness, don't brag or lie to cover up the truth. This kind of wisdom doesn't come from above. It's earthly and selfish and comes from the devil himself. Whenever people are jealous or selfish, they cause trouble and do all sorts of cruel things. So humility is not being jealous or selfish. And in fact, that kind of behavior just causes problems between people. If I can ask you a question, have you ever been jealous? How did it make you feel towards other people? So, instead of that kind of self-focused living, live differently, says James. This is what he says in verse 17 and 18. But the wisdom that comes from above leads us to be pure, friendly, gentle, sensible, kind, helpful, genuine and sincere. When peacemakers plant seeds of peace, they'll harvest justice. What he's really saying is this, a truly wise person doesn't live for self, but lives humble lives of peace and justice. So you notice something in what he said, but the wisdom that comes from above leads to these kind of things. Now, we all know that it doesn't come naturally for us to be humble. We tend to always put ourselves first, but the wisdom that Jesus gives is different, why? Well, if Jesus died for all of us, that means we all need rescuing. We've all got an issue that Jesus needs to deal with, which shows us that we're not more special and not less special than anyone else. And as we see what Jesus did for us, he died in our place, it changes how we see other people. Let me give you an example. When my son Noah was young, we often talked about the naughty step. If he did something wrong, he sat on the naughty step. But sometimes, what happens if I sat on the step instead of him? He would know he'd done something wrong, but now I took his place. Now imagine if he'd been then gone and done something wrong towards his brother, when I've already taken the place for him. That would be wrong, wouldn't it? That's humble wisdom. When you see what somebody's done for you, it changes how you then see other people. So we're gonna pray in a moment. I want you to pause and reflect on this. How much do you stop and check your own attitude? Is there things about your own humility that you need to work on? And in what ways does what Jesus has done change how you see other people so that you then might live more like Jesus? So because of Jesus, we see ourselves and people differently. And here's a challenge. What might that look like in your life this week? Good to see you and I'd love to pray for you as I go. Lord, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us, Lord Jesus. You died in our place. So we pray that you'd help us see other people with the same experience that we've had of you so that we might live humbly towards them and put others before us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Great to see you guys. Look forward to seeing you again really, really soon.